Uh, you know, the, the, it has impacted us in that the downstream industry were, were also restricted in their operations. And, uh, you know, all of that, the lack of travel, the, the lack of uh, businesses remaining open, and we in the con construction industry, uh, you know, there's a lot of people movement. You have large numbers of uh, working groups and labor in any construction site. So all that restriction led to an overall demand uh, drop by about 40%. And then that coupled with the Ramadan month in May, uh, coupled with the summer months here in, in, the, in the Middle East, uh, demand has, uh, has seriously dropped to about 50% of what we had uh, budgeted or what was planned. Most of the, our export markets, uh, our business is 50% uh, uh, reliant upon export sales to mainly Eastern Africa, Madagascar, Indian Ocean Islands. Uh, all that, we had major restrictions at the ports, uh, which led to long waiting times at, at each and every port due to quarantine. Uh, which then also resulted, the net result was a decline in the exports by 80%. And uh, we hope that now the, the, the next six months will be a time of some recovery. However, the major recovery, in our opinion, will come in 2021. Like our business, we have fine-tuned it to just-in-time inventories, not carrying too much stocks, not, not you know, relying a lot on outsourced or subcontracted uh, activities. But we realized that in the first two months, that is March and April, all the savings we had achieved in the past five years were wiped out in two months of not having spares uh, on time, not having the subcontractors here, uh, not having bags, for example, uh, you know, all these things. And that led us to start relooking at how do we get self-sufficient, mainly Eastern Africa, uh, Middle East and all looking inwards and saying, do we really rely only on, on imports or do we support the local industry? That, that is good. In my opinion, that is good. Whilst we see it as an immediate drop in our exports, in the longer term, I think it is important that businesses should work with governments and local partners to increase their local presence. And I think this COVID situation has created a reality check. You know, uh, now all the companies uh, in every market and the governments and the business businessmen in those countries have had time to reflect and, and, and do a reality check on, is this sustainable in the long run? Do we carry on importing or do we partner with someone who can invest in our country and grow those markets? And hence, I so what, what, what do you expect to see if you look at uh, 2020 versus your budget, say, or your, your, your previous forecast, and, and then also for next year? What, what's your outlook? Uh, against budget uh, this year, 2020, I think we will be at 50% of the budget. Because first, year, first half of the year has been literally washed out. As I said. The second half, I believe, will recover 30% in terms of uh, real terms. So at the end of the year, we are looking at 50% of the, of the budget. 2021, in my opinion, is when things will go back to normal. All the business units in every geography will be up to speed. And that's when I, we see more and more of the construction activity in terms of large projects, whereby you know, the, the big cement demand uh, comes from. So 2021, I see us getting back to our budget of 2020. And then the, after that, there will be growth, I think, 5 to 7% per annum. So I think also, uh, even before the COVID crisis, there were a lot of problems, a lot of financial problems and bankruptcies in, in Africa. Uh, is, is it a, an opportunity? Presumably, their finances are going to get even worse. And, and is it an opportunity then to, to restructure some of these uh, industries to have something that's more sustainable long term? Absolutely, and I mean, this, are, this is where, you know, if you have a, a partner which, uh, who understands their limitations and can appreciate uh, what we as a, as a company at Raisut Cement can bring to them, then there is a, a good synergy between the partners. Yeah? Uh, and this is exactly as you say, over the, the past decade, a lot of these new companies have mushroomed uh, from traders and, and they made a lot of money in the beginning and decided, okay, we need to now go backstream. 
However, without a, a robust technical partner to guide them through this, it's a difficult business, as you know. Uh, and, and not having a reliable clinker source also leads to all these uh, quality discrepancies. So this is a good opportunity, I think, for a company or any integrated company that wants has ambitions to expand into those markets to tie up with local partners who are struggling in one way or the other and create a very robust and a win-win uh, industry or business, you know, which is uh, exactly what where we are positioning ourselves and uh, we would like to see as, uh, you know, the, the future. Uh, having said that, you know, these markets, especially Eastern Africa, are quite challenging markets. They, you need to have a, a good understanding of the local environment. And this is where I think a, a good local partner, a robust partner, can add value uh, for a, 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 you know, a regional player like us who are looking to enter these markets but uh, don't necessarily have the in-market skills on how to navigate through the, the, the roadblocks or the challenges in those markets.